Uh, in the past, uh, I've written a number of articles about living in two different worlds, one world of America and the other world of Myanmar. And all that's <laughs> absolutely true. But when I was young, from the time I was born to after graduate school, I lived in two worlds. The first world was Merchantville and Pensacola, New Jersey. I was born in, during the war, and uh, my mother and I and um, lived with her mother and father, along with her younger siblings. And that was an idyllic world. But my father got a promotion after the war and had to move to Mount Lebanon. And that was a horrible thing for me because I went from an average, above average student in an average school system to what I considered dumb and poor in Mount Lebanon. But that was only part of my problem with Mount Lebanon. It's hard to, Mount Lebanon, Merchantville and Pensacola were before we moved to Pittsburgh. It was what I consider idyllic. It was, it was just a wonderful place. And I know that's partly true, uh, partly true, but it's also partly true that my perception is a little, not particularly accurate. But it seemed like everybody was happy and well. And then after we moved to Pittsburgh and lived in Mount Lebanon, not only was I've written about the effects of Mount Lebanon upon me emotionally. But more to the point, uh, my mother um, had a radical mastectomy, wound up with rheumatoid arthritis, around, wound up with um, lupus. And for probably two decades, it was this up and down, up and down, up and down. She was sick and then well for a while, and then sick and well for a while. And I got used to that pattern. And my father, toward the end of my mother's life, said um, to me, um, you need to come home and say goodbye to your mother. And I did. And we said goodbye to each other. And, and we, everybody was at the point of saying, oh, mother's going. I went back home and two, three days later, I got a telephone call and it was my mother. And she'd come home from the hospital, and I thought, this is just going to be another one of these. We talked for a long time, and it was a happy time, and then I said goodbye, and a couple days later, my father called and said, your mother died. And so that is kind of one world back in Merchantville and Pensacola, and then in Mount Lebanon. The other world that I'm living in now is with Ginger, who um, is Ginger number two. I've had three Irish setters in my life. The first Irish setter was called Ginger. And Ginger and I were, <laughs> were well bonded. And the second Ginger and I are even more well bonded. But Ginger, a year and a half ago, um, got a diagnosis of uh, irritable bowel syndrome. And what perplexes me, what rattles me a little bit, is that Ginger will be for a day or two, or a week, or a month or two, be good and happy as a lark, and then all of a sudden get sick. And, then, and it's just the same 
and you know, I've gotten to re I've resigned myself to the fact that Junior's not going to live forever. But this article is about about living in the moment. So appreciate your time watching and listening to this video, but more importantly, to read my essay. And it's about me and my dog and my life, but it is also kind of a parable for you in your life. So I appreciate your time. Take care. Ciao.